un since historically since he's been playing this game is the fact that he doesn't do casuals during tournament weekend. Right, which I agree with. He he saves he saves the secret sauce, if you will. Yep. Only tournament play. So I'm gonna be curious because we haven't seen him since what the last time he competed in Paris. Exactly, France. haven't seen him. Yeah. Especially in the offline setting. Um see Elias is gonna be going with Nico. So okay, so we see Bayman. Very interesting pick. Very, very instant pick. I think he just believes in the Bayman. I do believe that Bayman does well against Nico, though. I do believe so. She's I don't got know. access I don't to know. the 1P. She's very fast, but to get in a lot, she's got to use mids, which the parry opens up, obviously, for defensive tactics. For sure. And and this is definitely going to be a butt check because obviously this stage is the training stage. It's right. not you know, banned from the actual tournament itself. Which, one of the things that I like about the stage is the fact that it's so open, but it's got those spacings, so you can see the little lines on the ground, so you can see exactly how far the attacks reach out. Right. It's yep. a really good training stage. It's actually really awesome we finally got one of these in DOA. You know, we've always had the Tommy stage from, obviously, from DOA 4 and up, so I'm happy we actually got a legit training stage now. It's awesome. All right, so this is going to be exciting, man. I can't wait. to. I'm just so ready for this to start. Like, I'm just so amped up right now. Yeah. See, like a very confident player, very confident. Whenever he's flustered, he, he kind of does his thing with a stick a little bit, but he jumps right back into it. He's a very confident player. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we saw him sit down with our community manager, Emmanuel Master. And they, they went about even with one another, just in a right. casual format. But the things that uh, Seal was putting on the screen were pretty shocking to me. Right. The way Seal plays in a spacing game is something we do not see a lot, especially from our U.S. players. Um, you'll see him throw out a lot of jabs um, from mid-screen to try to keep you at bay. Yep. Um, a lot of he use a lot of 1P to kind of, he'll beat you with 4-4 four, four punch, which is safe on block. And yep. He'll throw a 1P out there to kind of stop you from sidestepping, stop right. you from jabbing or grabbing him. So really good right. tactic. Obviously, he's a Genfu player, so using 1P comes naturally from playing Genfu. Yeah. And, and one of the styles that, that's definitely different from the American players that we've seen is the fact that they are more hesitant to hold. Yeah. So so one of the weaknesses, if you will, is players should take advantage of the fact that of the quick launch. Right. right exactly. Because if you stun the person, you want to play your food. You don't want to wait for them to react. You just want to launch them as soon as possible and not give them an opportunity to think. We'll see right, if we so can do Let's jump into this. We're going to be going to the lab stage here. Nice. That's a uh, safe string there by Nico. Nice. Gets a stun extension. Kudo's starting off really strong here with the backbreaker grab. Exactly. And he's got a stage here that, that lends itself well to, to, to Bayman, right? Right. Bayman likes to take advantage of the ground itself. So the extra 10 points of damage from the electric floor yes. come in handy. One thing that I see from Nico, uh, for especially for Seelaz with Nico, he plays the stun game a lot with her. Again, yes. DOA 6, you can get the stun launch, but he obviously enjoys playing the stun game a little more. Yes. Get that extra damage to get the launch. And the interesting thing is, Kudo is starting off very strong. Very but strong. We did notice that... Uh, you know, CEO had been watching all the players, and that's, I think, the one advantage that Nico said has, like I said before, is the fact that he didn't play any casuals, so right. Nico didn't get it, uh, not Nico, CEO didn't get a chance to download Kudo. The one thing I will say about Nico is her combos work on pretty much every wave match. You're going to get really good damage on every wave match. Payment being the heaviest wave class. Still able to get a 40% combo there. CEO starting off really strong this round. Okay, beautiful quick one. She's not going to use the meter. I respect it. He wants to save it for later. He's already up around it. No point using the meter. Okay, nice. Gets the jab extension. Closed the round out there. Yeah, smart play. I mean, in that situation, Bayman's already at negative. He's got the fastest characters. Why not nine frame jab? Right. Okay, so one thing I do notice about uh, Rakuto's Bayman, he used a lot of free cancels. It works out for Bayman, too, because you have to respect him. Yeah. Super annoying. He's got an offensive hold. You have to be paying attention when he's going to use offensive hold. Exactly. And that's because, you know, Bayman has such deep stuns, you can take advantage of the free cancels. And this could be very... Oh, my combo. God, the drop combo. And he gets caught ducking. Got See, caught. the drop combo. Yeah. Is that because of the lack of casuals? No, no, I think in that situation, it was one of those, one of those you know, you have a brain fart every once in a while. Right, yep, you know? it happens. After the tournament play. Jump back into the match here. See, Lazio doing a really good job of keeping the pressure. Gets the quick launch again. Yeah. Kudo has to be a little more patient and stunned. He's getting hit by that delayed launch yeah. every single time. And that third round really got in Kudo's head, I think. Because right now, Seal's oh. kind of moving a nice little rhythm right now. Okay, there's the stun extension. And he's going to die. That's 100%. Nice See, Lazio goes up one to nothing in the second. Yeah. Man, all right, so Rakudo warming up, warming up his hands. His hands might be a little bit kind of cold. Oh, he's sitting up in the chair. Oh, man. Yeah. That's that, all right, that's a he's ready. Face right there. He's ready. He's going to stay on Bayman. He's going to stay on Bayman. I like what we saw from him. It was just he cost himself that round. He recognized the mistake. And right. There's no reason for yep. him to, like, switch characters. So just get back into it and handle your business. Rakudo knows this matchup. It's not a lack of matchup uh, experience. He's played Nico in tournaments multiple times. So as we say that, he just lost half-life. Exactly. He's really, really good. Rakudo's got some work to do. Oh, he countered mid punch right there. What a hole. Yeah. All right, there it is. Forward kick kick. Nice go. See logic. Yeah. <laughs> and Seal does it for two very good reasons. Two mid punches. He starts the round with a grab. And he parried. What a read. 
That is safe. Nice. Gets the forward punch, punch, kick. It's the guaranteed down throw every single time. And cool nice was not break expecting a wake up game there. He wasn't. He wasn't. But it's good though because he knows that. See, a lot of you knows he can't just do a wake up game and get his leg broke. <laughs> Did you just see what I saw there? Seal broke Kudo's throw. Throw combo. Very Did few really. players break. You can't break Kudo, especially in this game because obviously, combo. as you know, Bayman lost his frame advantage after he breaks his throw. So he's yeah. not. He doesn't want you out of that now. Well, as we said, a nice, nice round from Kudo. Very strong round. Very nice reads all the way through. Nice side step there. And that's the one thing, if, if we think about what happened with Zachariah earlier, right. we saw a lot of sidesteps from Zachariah yes. which kept him in the match. Because Nico has a lot of linear strength that right. you get around. I think, you know, a lot of players are starting to lose sight of how good the sidestep was because you got to use it. Do not be afraid to throw that sidestep out there. It avoids everything that does not track. It's super good tactic. Um, again, you know, Zachariah used it yesterday and was able to almost take the match on Seal's And the one thing I've seen about Seal these days right now is he's not using the reset throw. He's going for the max damage. Yes, exactly. Because he doesn't want to take the risk. There's no point. Yeah. Just the 3KK launch. That is going to hurt so bad. He's going to go to the city. If he launches him, he's dead. He is 100% dead, and he's going to use the meter. He's not going to risk it. Might be the Wait, no. Might be. No, he's not dead. He didn't do the bound first. Is it enough? Can he come? Oh, what that's it. Hole. Just that's like just that. Shia Lodzka, very convincing. Wow. Very convincing. You yeah. can tell Shia Lodzka has been doing his homework 100%. His hold ratio was, like, super high that game. He held almost everything. Yeah. It was it was a strong set from Seal there. Very strong set from, the, from uh, 